Welcome back to another episode of the Bitcoin Magazine podcast. I have the leadership group of Hive Digital here on the show. Really excited to be chatting once again with Aiden and Frank from Hive and talk about what is happening with their business. Just a quick update from their uh, from their uh, investor letter. Uh, you know, they recently produced over two hundred and fifty nine bitcoins. Uh, they're hodling close to 2,000 Bitcoins, and they're maintaining over 3.3 exahash. Uh, a lot has been going on in the public Bitcoiner market and I, our public Bitcoin miner market, and I am really excited to sit down with these gents. So without further ado, Frank, Aiden, welcome back to the show. It's great to be with y'all. So gentlemen, you know, uh, yeah. I really kind of see... I really see you both as uh, kind of both my uh, my infrastructure and mining experts, but also my experts in kind of what's happening in data center tech more generally, not just Bitcoin. Um, you know, Hive has a very, very interesting story where you were mining Bitcoin as well as with GPUs. But when GPU mineable coins like Ethereum switched to uh, POS, you were able to actually transition those data centers. So uh, I think that this conversation is going to be really fascinating because we're going to see how like data centers in general are kind of uh, growing and, and what goes into it. But before all of that, let's talk about Hive Digital. Uh, you used to be called Hive Blockchain just earlier today. That changed. Uh, Frank, let's let, let's jump to you. Hive Digital. You know, Why I, the name change? I, I think it's well covered, you know, in, in our headline uh, today in the press release so that our strategic expansion to power the future of the artificial intelligence and just the whole explosion in GPT chat and other competitors coming out with other GPT. The, the use of AI is creates a big need for NVIDIA chips. And uh, we're fortunate that we started planning this early. Uh, we didn't expect GPT chat to unfold this past quarter the way it has, but it's been nothing but a wonderful position for us as we've tested our beta site. And now we're going to scale it on a macro basis. It's going to, you know, has a hundred million dollar opportunity with high gross margins, like when we used to uh, mine uh, Ethereum. Um, but I think you know we're focused on Bitcoin miners. Uh, we're going to double our exahash uh, in the next six to nine months. I think about six months is our goal. Uh, and the upgrading, and I can give you all the granularity. He's doing an amazing job there. And this is a, another source of revenue for us, uh, where we could take these these GPU chips and use AI to, to mine smaller coins and convert them to Bitcoin uh, at the same time as expanding uh, this big opportunity with GPG chat. I did. You want to you want to jump in with kind of your spec, your perspective on this opportunity that Hive has? Yeah, it's been a. Uh... Uh, exciting because what we've actually done is successfully built uh, a beta program where we've booked a quarter million dollars of revenue on our financials that were just announced, which was our fiscal year end, that it goes up to March 31st. So that quarter million dollars actually was just a month and a half with, uh, I think, about 400 GPUs. And what we're in the process of doing now is we partner with Supermicro, which is one of the world's leading uh, manufacturers of the CPU servers. And so what this does is it really uh, provides a strong foundation to unleash the uh, full potential of our GPUs by populating these, these super servers uh, with 10 GPUs, you, you know, got over seven terabytes of storage. We've got, you know, dual Intel processors, 96 threads, all, all the stuff that you need to really do that <laughs> hardcore intensive compute. And so we've actually got um, our first order, our first new order, I should say, because uh, we we had a, we we did the beta with our, our super micro, so we have our first com commercial order arriving in uh, Stockholm uh, Monday uh, of next week, and then our, our second order uh, coming in the following month. And just the same way that you know we build and grow our crypto mining business, you know you have ASICs on order, they arrive monthly. Um, we're scaling this out, so it's it's very exciting. Uh, so we uh, would hope to scale up the revenue from our, what we call GPU as a service, where we're allowing um, uh, people that uh, on the marketplaces we partnered with 
to run our GPUs for you know a few hours or a few days. And what's really exciting is that when you look at the revenues compared to crypto mining, our GPUs as a service business, which is which is an AI service, we're doing a dollar fifty a kilowatt hour of revenue, right? And Bitcoin mining revenues with with new gear. 11 cents a kilowatt hour, 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So we're talking like almost 15 X per kilowatt hour, uh, the revenue. So this is very exciting. Um, of course, of course, and this is, there's, there's a link to it on our new website, um, Hive Digital Technologies. There's a link to Hive Cloud and Hive Cloud is our enterprise grid, grid um, private cloud platform that will allow businesses. So now this is at the more enterprise scale. So GPU is a service, any any interested user can go onto a marketplace, have access to our GPUs. But with Hive Cloud, that is intended to be an enterprise grade service for small and mid sized businesses that are looking to an alternative to the bigger, uh, you know, the big three incumbent uh, cloud providers, which which charge dearly, right? And so what it's going to allow people to do is they could train their own large language models on Hive Cloud, have a service level agreement with Hive ownership of data, privacy, all the things that are very important for companies who want to get into the AI realm, but don't necessarily want to just use a public tool like ChatGPT, right? Which is a lot like, and anything that you're sending in ChatGPT, any proprietary data, think of uploading photos to Facebook in 2012, right? Like you're, you're just going to um, give up ownership of your data. And so this is, um, we see where, we, and I've, I've talked to a lot of companies that are active in AI right now or enterprises that want to get into the sector, uh, privacy and ownership of data is really big. So we're tackling it um, both in terms of understanding what our potential clients' needs are. We're, we're building up the infrastructure side of the business. And of course, the bridge between that is the software, which is Hive Cloud. So I, I've always found that Hive is is probably one of the most interesting public miners out there. One of, one of the most interesting companies going into this new paradigm of the digital world. Um, and I think it's fascinating kind of your journey going from uh, mining crypto, mining Bitcoin, now expanding into uh, providing uh, differentiated services uh, to, uh, you know, let's just say on the, the AI hype. But, you know, it, those services are generalized. They can they can really serve, you know, like you mentioned, any cloud needs, and, you know, really anything that needs CPUs and GPUs. Uh, that's pretty much what the Internet is run on. Um, can you just talk about um, how Hive has been able to adapt so quickly and uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that other folks who are in the, the public Bitcoin mining space have fallen into? Uh, inch by inch, everything's a cinch. Take it by the yard can be very hard. I, I think it's uh, an old old uh, football statement. You know, take it, get the inches in there. Um, and I and, and I think that that's how we focus. Uh, and and we have not taking huge bets on on energy that can blow up on you, or huge bets on buying a bunch of equipment and then finding out they're not delivered on time. Uh, so it's been. And we we've had our challenges, you know. This the um, the servers that uh, uh, that we originally ordered for our AI business uh, were were just not up to spruce that we needed, and and they were delayed by nine months in getting and getting delivered. Um, but we've solved all those problems just in time, and uh, we're very excited about the strategic relationship with um, Super Micro, uh, which is one of those other great IBD stocks this year, like Nvidia. Um, that sort of captured the whole the, the development in this space. So we, we feel that we're going to go about it prudently and cautiously, but it is big blue sky for us, just like it was when we first went to Ethereum. And we've invested capital in some LPs. We've invested in looking at the Lightning Network. Uh, we're looking at ordinals. I think this, um, the, the concept, uh, I can give you more granularity, but... The, the, the idea that if, if you hodl green coins, green generated coins, they're Genesis coins, um, they're, they're going to have more value as, as we get further along the curve. We've only got another couple million uh, coins to mine and they're going to become more valuable. And so we this has been clearly validated because we've been offered more 
uh, for our green coins. Uh, we've not sold into that. And we've been now finding out that the value of our uh, Satoshis has gone up and who would ever think. So I'd want you to go through and explain, I think it's just the, this whole idea of, of the value of your 100 million Satoshis. Yeah, so um, on the core side of the business, Bitcoin mining, uh, where, you know, again, we've uh, consistently rank in terms of having the best Bitcoin for Exahash. And just to, uh, before I dive into the whole ordinal thing, just to echo one of Frank's sentiments, you know, when we scale, we, we do it with intention and we want to make sure we have the best unit economics and we're not, um, you know, biting off more than we can chew. And that means we're, we're thoughtful about uh, the energy that we're sourcing and ensuring that uh, you know, the ASICs we're buying are the best deployment of capital. We're always looking for the best cash flow return on invested capital. So that's just making sure the core engine of our Bitcoin mining, which we just hit 3.4 exahash with our ASICs, uh, we, we mentioned a press release. Uh, on top of that, we have about 150 petahash of um, uh, BTC equivalent from our GPUs, right? So that puts us over three and a half exahash. We'll, we hope to be at four by next month. Um, is we did a scan of, of our wallets, right? Because I mean, Hive has been mining since 2017, right? It's one of the first crypto, it's the first public crypto miner, sorry. So uh, we have uh, about 260 uncommon sats. And so uh, it's, you know, there's, there's a little bit of coding and computer science to do this. Like you have to do raw signatures if you want to transact with specific sats. So this is stuff that we're working on. Our engineering team is working on sorting out so we can actually... Um, sell specific uh, uncommon sats because we've been offered um, value for these, which are orders orders of magnitude higher than the face value. And moreover, um, we're interested in doing our own ordinal project, right? And so we have our GPUs, which we could um, generate perhaps um, some, you know, AI art. And we're, we're thinking of utilizing that AI art as a bespoke high ordinal project, which we'll use our own hash rate to put onto the Bitcoin blockchain, right? And so, A, it's, it's, it's cool that we're doing it from A to Z, but B, it's also figuring out on the nuances and execution as we've always strived to be like a first mover and a technology leader. Uh, because once we pull these things off, um, you know, who knows where um ordinal technology and inscription theory will take bitcoin right and being primed and and, and understanding the levers and gears of, of how to how to work in that realm um are, is is essential so we're we're trying to be a first mover there and i always think of you know bitcoin um as we we've, we've alluded to before um and i think uh jack mahler's put it really good in one of his keynote speeches bitcoin is uh, you know, public infrastructure uh, for money, like the internet is public infrastructure for information. But now you have information on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so this reminds me of when the iPhone came out, when I was an RF engineer and, you know, the phones that we had, we had more data bandwidth um, at the base station and, and cell phone level um, than we needed. When, remember, GPS have like a Motorola Razor and then the iPhone came out and it changed everything. And now we have this like, you know, um, thirst for more and more data because social media got introduced applications. So who knows what applications will be introduced with ordinal technology. So that's why we want to be positioned and we're working with our strategic partners in the space. Um, and we like, we, you know, I, I like to let you guys know what we're working on. I, I, I can't give up too many details because it's still a competitive sector and, and time to market's important, but there's, there's so much habit happening right now in, in the multiverse. And then at the same time as a public well, it's, company, it's, right? it's, actually, it's simple though, is an item that if you have 200 ordinals and you get out for a quarter million, you're talking about pennies worth a quarter million. And, and that just says that if you have the rarity of, of, of these Satoshis at an inflection point, so certain Bitcoins are gonna be more valuable and underlying that are these Satoshis and that all gets unraveled like a Christmas present because of ordinals, because of someone able to find a way to attach uh, a, a, a NFT to a Satoshi. Um, so I, I think it's just extremely exciting that we don't know what news, what news is going to come out in the next six months. 
but we do know that there are funds being raised to go and invest in a lot of money in the ordinal space and the lightning networks. And, and I think that this is really important as uh, running these data centers and being independent. We're not centralized, we're decentralized. We cater in a B2B market to the small business and the medium-sized business. Uh, we allow them to all of a sudden embrace GPT chat and start expanding how they can run their business and routing their, their trucks around the, the city, uh, uh, things of that nature. The AI will help them facilitate. Uh, and, and we can see this growth expanding rapidly. And that's where we're positioned. So we don't, we're so excited about something new is going to come out next week. I mean, absolutely fascinating stuff. I want to, you know, kick it back to you all, you know, obviously as miners, Q, you know, Q2 of this year was a fantastic, and even, you know, Q1 was really a fantastic half of the year for miners in terms of fees on the Bitcoin network. Things have mm -hmm. slowed down now and really, you know, cooled down as the ordinals and BRC20 uh, fad is kind of like cooling off. Um, you know, what makes you think that uh, what happened here is actually something that might have some staying power? You know, why are you so excited about, you know, the potential of ordinals and why is it not just a, a hype cycle? Because the Bitcoin network is the strongest peer-to-peer -peer network in the world. But but uh, the Ord protocol isn't Bitcoin. You know, inscriptions on the on the blockchain is Bitcoin. The Ord protocol is kind of its own thing. I'm just kind of I'm curious if you so, if you, so you have. I think the fact that is it gets validated again, and we come along with the creation of, of ordinals, um, and and they come in waves. You know, we've seen a big push by the regulatory world, and now it seems to have slowed down a bit, um, and that impacts the sentiment from that whole NFT world. Um, but I don't think it's over. And I think that like Uber was disruptive to centrally controlled um, two families running every city's a cab business, along comes Uber and, and it's decentralized. Uh, I think that we're gonna see this, this, this sort of migration to, when we look at the NFT space and ordinals is disruptive to art galleries, which charge 50% commissions. Uh, and if you go to Sotheby's, it's 25%. Along comes at two and a half to up to 10% uh, fees from the space. So I think it will come in waves. It's not a straight up path. It will have these spikes, regroup, and something new is going to happen. And just to add to that, I forgot was you have to throw money at it. So, so one of these young artists uh, that we've been introduced to basically bootstrapped his company, so it was like Hugo Labs behind uh, uh, Board Apes Yacht Club, and 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 so he's a, a ordinal art, but it costs you know him a quarter million dollars of fa friends and family putting money into it, and now his business is worth five million. So I think you're going to you're going to need, and what's what is happening, and to fulfill that need is VC money, LP money sophisticated players seeding a hundred of these different types of ideas in that ordinal space uh, and art space and then another hundred you know, looking at um, lightning network so who's going to prevail at the end i don't know but once you start putting money behind developers and money behind creative people uh the shift away from ethereum and more of these coders, et cetera, going into this space and knowing that they have access to capital for their ideas is extremely bullish for the Bitcoin network. I, I definitely agree with you on that. Aiden, do you, do you have anything to add around like the longevity of the Ord protocol and, and you know, maybe the, the viability of this on Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, the without getting too too technical um i think that again i i liken it to you know the advent of information being um inscripted on the bitcoin blockchain is is probably where you've got the the most interesting um landscape um obviously you know like the the brc20 thing um i think that was mostly hype driven and you know they'll they'll be um, people will probably do exchanges for those separately. I think we were seeing a lot of uh, 
volume, uh, sorry, you know, big spike in, in transaction fees um, around getting BRC projects minted and then, and then trading of those, those tokens. Um, but I think that um, really it's, it's where information uh, is stored on the Bitcoin blockchain. And, you know, I, I'm understanding that there's new breakthroughs where people are finding clever workarounds for um, data size limits, et cetera. So I, I personally think that that's um, unique, but, you know, even, even zooming out a little bit and just looking at like the macro sentiment now, uh, you know, it seems that you've got the really big institutions now, BlackRock has um, done a complete 180 and they're all um, positive and, and favorable on, um, on Bitcoin and they've got their ETF that they're, and, and that they're pushing forward. Um, I saw a, uh, I think it was standard chartered is saying that Bitcoin can rise to 120,000 by the end of 2024 standard charter. Like who would think yep, that, I saw that too, you know? So it's, it's, I, I think, um, you know, maybe what happens is um, like Frank alluded to the whole Yuga Labs board ape thing where, you know, something starts with a small group of, you know, tech geeks or influencers, et cetera. And, you know, maybe it catches a, a certain um, uh, a wave, you know, in terms of uh, the social interest. And, you know, if we look at NFTs, okay, so whatever, Justin Bieber and rappers started buying them. And once it kind of gets into the collective consciousness, then, you know, you kind of have the surge. And so I think that where we saw uh, now, now, after all of that excitement and how Bitcoin held its price, um, you know, in the first, you know, three to six months of this year, and we saw all of this ordinal technology and inscription technology, uh, I think now that the big banks are sort of like, wow, you know, this is robust, um, you know, there's something here. And you, you notice that they're talking about Bitcoin specifically, right? So um, I think it's the, the second half of this year should be exciting. And, and that's why, you know, we're also, again, we mentioned at the beginning of this call, but, you know, our goal is to double our, our hash rate uh, and, and be, uh, you know, one of the best pound, if not the best pound for pound Bitcoin miner in the sector. While, while we may not be the biggest uh, pound for pound, we want to be the best. You know, one of the things we did is that we, to share with your, the listeners is that, Hive has had this propensity from the auditors in Canada to be very, I would call it ultra conservative or aggressive in writing everything off. And, um, and one thing is, is, is we did as an exercise, we went out and looked at uh, all of our peers with no non-cash charges. Uh, what does it look like cash in, cash out? And we're very proud of running our business as being the most profitable last year uh in and besides efficiency etc so we take a look at this past quarter for after a year end it was march uh we've written everything off you know the, the, the next to nothing for valuation for it. and so this rise in bitcoin and the rise in the business uh in, in having a hold position puts us in an, i think a very attractive earnings momentum uh, play um that's the potential and i think that as we go forward that you're going to see that as we expand our our bitcoin footprint then that will expand the revenue and the cash flow once this starts showing up in ibd uh, investors business daily and publications like that because they look for momentum and revenue and momentum and cash flow then you the audience of people that come into the company starts to expand rapidly and then they find out that we're, you know, in addition to Bitcoin mining and focus on the Web3 build out, uh, we're also building over the AI. So we want to be positioned so that uh, we show up on that, that menu as the hottest item is that we're covering it all. And I, and I look at our partners, you know, buying NVIDIA chips, our partners with Supermicro BT. Uh, th these two public companies have had a phenomenal six months this year, along with Hive. And so we want to be able to move along with that direction. Uh, and what we did with our Ethereum mining is that we basically can put a, an extra hash of Bitcoin mining on the balance sheet. Uh, and, and, and so we hope that the AI high margin opportunity uh, as, as we go into that, that field and, and try to scale as fast as we can in a prudent way, um, that we could turn around and continue to take our 
three x three point four x a hash to six x a hash this year, and then the following year take it up to twelve. Um, but we'll have to you know look at sources of capital. But we've been able to show that we can generate good cash flow internally. So I mean, again, I think that that what you just pointed out there is one of the biggest differentiators between Hive and and, and other uh, miners in the space is is that kind of focus on on efficiency and profitability, and that's something that you both have uh, stressed to me on every time we've had one of these uh, one of these interviews. Um, I wanted to you know kind of kick it back to Aiden and ask you know how do you manage uh, deciding where to invest in next, right? Um, you know, you, you've been able to take money from ETH mining and turn that into more exahash on the Bitcoin network. Uh, how do you, how do you make those allocation decisions and when? I, I mean, the, what we solve for is best cash flow return on invested capital. Uh, so it's math basically. And, you know, you, you just kind of have to, like, if we're looking at Bitcoin mining, uh, we look at where hash price is, we do, you know, planar math and sensitivity analysis um, on multiple coordinates to figure out what would allow us to get the best return. And that means, you know, when you have a massive landscape of machines with everything from 22 joules of terahash up to 30 joules of terahash, and, and now, you know, there's machines at 24, 27 joules of terahash, all at different prices. Uh, and then you have to have, have like, you know, input sensitivity analysis, running that on a time, time variant basis. Um, you, you really got to understand what is going to give you the best chance at uh, making your money back and then some. Uh, but then when we also have the GPU fleet, uh, that is where getting into our AI deployment and expanding and sort of how and why we timed the, the rebrand now, because now that we tested that, uh, complete that beta testing, and by the way, you know, that, that quarter million dollars, that was, you know, again, just for about a month and a half of revenue. Um, we've been earning income ever since, you know, all throughout the second calendar quarter. We're like, okay, you know, now, now it's time for us to really um, expand there. And we've got numerous partners that we're working with um, on the AI and GPU side of the business. And as we mentioned, Supermicro is a key partner of ours um, as uh, getting those servers really allows us to unleash the power of the GPUs. And just to give you a tidbit, you know, a, a $6 million investment in uh, servers will allow us to realize a revenue of $15 million in one year. Now, the reason why is because that you would say, oh my God, that's like less than half of your payback. Um, yes, because we already own the GPUs, right? We have 38,000 NVIDIA data center grade GPUs with Tensor Core, with ray tracing, you know, with all these features. And so the fact that we already have the GPUs and we're, um, you know, now pivoting their application, it's a it's a very attractive ROI proposition. And so that's that's another exciting thing. But yeah, I mean, ROI, that, that's the first thing I said, and that's the last thing I'll say, ROI, right? We want to make money for our shareholders. It makes complete sense. And again, y'all have been very consistent on that point. Uh, just to, you know, we're, we only have about five minutes left, and I would be remiss, Frank, to not ask you about what you're seeing in the public markets. You know, obviously, uh, this has been a stupendous year for all Bitcoin miners, uh, but we're seeing, I would say, like hot and cold elsewhere in the markets. S&P uh, brushing up against all time highs, but a lot of bearishness elsewhere. Uh, a lot of macro commentary that I would say is uncertain, to say the least. I'm kind of curious, what is your outlook on what's happening, you know, more, more, uh, more spread out in, in the, the general investing I, I write about this every every month in particular. Every week, I publish uh, goes uh, a Frank talk and investor alert goes out to a hundred thousand readers plus in eighty countries. And and the monthly basis, what we've found is that purchasing manufacturers index is one of the best leading indicators for energy needs and for commodities such as copper uh, and steel. And and with that, you have to follow the global PMIs. So and when they're above fifty, that means in six months, energy prices are going to be higher. Uh, economy is going to be stronger. It's going to be more job creation. Um, the, the global PMI has gone negative, in particular since March, when China first went positive and negative. 
So that's a dampening effect on commodity demand, uh, but it's also a benefit on energy demand. So energy prices start to soften from what they were a year ago. On a positive note is, is, is the airlines, Jets ETF, uh, and, and it's a great leading indicator of economic robustness. And it's been on a tear this year. It's outperformed the S&P by a wide margin. And when you go book an air flight six months out or a year out, there's no discounts. And you have to write a check today. You can book a hotel and you can cancel as you get closer, but not you have to write a check today. So the fact that you have to write a check today for something in the future just ends up being a great leading indicator. So we have all this negative news of negative real interest rates where we are um, in the economy. And, and and I just sit back and say, you know, it's not that bad. Um, the Jets is telling you that it's not that bad. And and if you go back almost 100 years in data, whenever you have a, a president who's a Democrat and, and Congress is a Republican, and you're in the third year of a presidential election cycle, math is in your favor uh, of over 95%, probably the market's up 8%. So I, I just scratched my head with all the negative news and we see a trillion dollars of market cap go into AI related stocks. Uh, we see uh, hundreds of billions of going into uh, the crypto space. And so I would say the odds favor the market trades higher this year. Uh, I could easily go through corrections and, and, and I'm basing all this on PMIs being negative is scaring Germany. It is scaring China and they will panic going into the second half of the year and start a stimulus. Next year's the fourth year of a presidential election cycle. So print the money and that's good for Bitcoin. Fantastic analysis. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Uh, I want to give you both, you know, I guess, Frank, you kind of did have a little bit of a last word there. I didn't want to pass it back to you for, for your last word before we wrap up here. Yeah, I mean, um, we've talked about our initiatives in AI. We've talked our initiatives in ordinals. We've talked about our, you know, just focus on being pound for pound. The best, I would, I would actually note, um, I don't know if this is the best forum for this, but, you know, when our, our, um, it echoes one of Frank's sentiments with, with the auditors and all these non-cash impairments. Like, you know, when you look at our audit financials that just came out, we did over a hundred million of revenue, uh, you know, and you back out, the uh, corporate operating costs from the, from GNA on a cash basis, the company made over 30 million last fiscal year. Right. And on top of that, there's all these not, you know, impairments, depreciations, et cetera. Um, you know, they're impairing real estate. They're, they're impairing deposits, like things that you just wouldn't think would normally be impaired. And so that creates a lot of non-cash and negative charges. But when you just look at the revenue, the cost of goods sold, and that gives you your gross mining margin, and then just your GNA, which are cash costs. The business did over thirty million uh, of of, um, of earnings on a uh, on a cash basis, which I think is very remarkable because you know, as you know, that included um, October to uh, December, and even January was rough. Right, our fiscal year goes from April twenty twenty two to March of of twenty twenty three. So I'm very proud of my team for. Uh, you know, we, we have a very lean team. Um, you know, we work around the clock. So, and we have the lowest joint with the GNA as a percentage of revenue to all our peers, Iden. We have the lowest GNA as a percentage and the lowest GNA in an absolute sense. I mean, most of our peers that are doing multi exahash, all of our peers that are doing multi exahash uh, mining are about 50 million GNA. Ours is 13, right? Maybe some are 40, but you know, we're so we're a lean fighting machine. Lean fighting machine, yeah. Yeah. Frank's got the golden gloves, I got the Muay Thai. So, you know, which <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, thank you again for coming on the show. Every time you come the, the market changes and hive is reacting to it in a new way, which I just find is absolutely fascinating. Excited to have you back on again soon. Uh, but with that. Uh, to the listeners, thank you so much for coming on, for watching, and uh, please give us back some feedback. Let us know if this show is helpful. Let us know if we deserve those five-star rankings. Leave a comment, and hey, 
come hey. see me and maybe these gentlemen over at Bitcoin Amsterdam. So we'll be we'll be there like last year. We'll be key sponsors and we love it. Absolutely. Well, hey, Bitcoin Amsterdam, 12, October 12th through the 13th. I'm excited to be there. It is shaping up to be much bigger. And I, in my opinion, it's going to be better than the first one. Uh, I'm really excited to show everyone what we're working on. So uh, come Great. see us in Amsterdam. But with that, peace out, everyone. Thank you Take so care. much. And, and cheers to you uh, on, on the success and on the rebrand. Uh, and excited to have you back on the show soon. Thank you for the wonderful questions. Bye. Nice. Appreciate it. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee, a city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th. Thank you fellow Bitcoiners. You brought Bitcoin to the global stage. Bitcoin came and Bitcoin was not expected by anybody. Joining our three-day ride on a mission of hyper-Bitcoinization with brilliant minds that raised the bar worldwide. But it goes far deeper than that. You listened to different angles and seen various perspectives. You dared to stand up and speak out. If you love somebody, tell them to buy Bitcoin. You were there to learn, teach, and inspire. Discovered opinions and arise with vision. And everything less than that is pure madness. You came together to collaborate and celebrate side by side for the greatest financial innovation. You came to Amsterdam and you made history.